At the office of Nellis Air Force Base, Las Vegas, Captain Reaper looked annoyed after watching his favorite basketball team just being defeated by the opposing team. Captain Reaper is an unmanned drone operator, whose job is to accompany the field team in the air as well as the destruction team when the American soldiers carry out their mission on land. Reaper had failed in his marriage three times. He had eight children and was now waiting for the birth of his ninth child from his fourth wife. Sergeant Nia Branson was Reaper's assistant operator, who was about to get married. That morning, she met Reaper and intended to ask for help regarding her marriage. Seeing that Reaper was upset due to not finding his satchel of coffee, Nia gave up her intention to tell Reaper what she wanted to talk about. Meanwhile, at the United States Air Base in Palawan, Philippines, Sergeant JJ Playboy Kinney will carry out his first duty with a team led by Master Sergeant John Sugarsweet. That day, Kinney John and his two colleagues, Sergeant Abel and Sergeant Bishop, were ordered to go to the Sulu Sea to rescue a CIA agent who was caught while spying on a man named Alexander Petrov, who was an arms dealer and former KGB agent. The scene returned showing the Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas. After receiving a call from one of his children, Reaper came to see his subordinates, who were always so busy watching basketball games that Reaper often didn't answer phone calls. Reaper reminded them that if his wife was pregnant, he needed to always be alert if there was a sudden call. Reaper couldn't blame the phone in the operator's room, so he asked them to lower the television volume and immediately pick up if there was a call. Not long after, Reaper's boss, Colonel Dutz Packett, ordered Reaper to go back to work and not disturb the fun of those who were resting there. Knowing that this was Playboy's first mission, the seniors reminded Playboy to remain focused on communicating with the drone. They wanted Playboy to stay vigilant so as not to become a burden on the team. Upon arrival at the destination, John immediately ordered his troops to immediately jump. Playboy, who was making the jump for the first time, had difficulty opening his parachute when he was about to land. After successfully landing safely, Playboy, who was in charge of coordinating with air monitoring, immediately communicated with Reaper, who was on standby with the MQ-9 unmanned aerial vehicle, which was flying above the island. While communicating with Reaper, who was observing from aerial monitoring, they continued to follow the forest at a distance of 8 kilometers from the target. After walking 5 kilometers and getting closer to the target, Sergeant Abel, who was leading the team, suddenly saw a suspicious movement not far from their position. John then ordered Playboy to contact Reaper to display drone visuals so that they would know what was in front of them. When Reaper's drone camera was connected to Playboy's device, the visuals were clearly visible. Reaper could even see Bishop raising his middle finger. Not long after that, suddenly the drone's operating system malfunctioned so that it couldn't work and couldn't show anything. Reaper was forced to withdraw the MQ-9, which suddenly had problems, and he would send it immediately after they repaired it at the airbase. While waiting for air support from Reaper to return, John decided to continue moving towards their target. Not long after that, they arrived at the edge of the hill at their target location. John observed several soldiers guarding the location with binoculars and told his troops to take a position and approach their target. They descended the hill towards the target located on the edge of the dam. Not long afterward, they saw Alexander Petrov with his wife and child at that location. Meanwhile, at Nellis Air Force Base in Las Vegas, for the umpteenth time, Reaper was again annoyed when he saw that the incoming call was not ringing because one of them had changed the telephone into the silent mode. Reaper again reminded everyone, even his superior, Colonel Packett, to be more aware of an incoming call because it could be an emergency call. On the other hand, in the operational zone, suddenly two pickup trucks came to the place, and it was discovered that they were the local militia, Abu Sayyaf, led by Saeed Hashima, who were suspected of aiming to buy weapons. Not long after that, Reaper contacted Playboy and told him that he was ready to go back on the air. After receiving the location coordinates from Playboy, Reaper finally arrived at the location and Playboy could see the visuals from the drone camera again. It wasn't known what happened between Hashimi and Petrov until chaos broke out there. From a distance, 
John and his colleagues witnessed this terrible scene. When Hashimi ordered his man to catch Petrov's son, who was trying to escape, Bishop, who didn't want to see the child executed, began to carry out actions. Playboy began to instruct Reaper to drop missiles towards the target. Just as Hashimi was about to execute the child, Abel and Bishop started shooting. At the same time, the missiles fired by Reaper also started to attack the place. After a powerful explosion which managed to save the child, suddenly three enemies came out from under the building where Playboy was. Unexpectedly, a grenade fell in front of Playboy, which made him take action by knocking down the building. This incident attracted the attention of the enemy who automatically knew their position and started shooting them. In the shootout, Abel was seriously injured and could not survive. Even though Reaper had tried to help them in the air, the large number of Hashimi's men overwhelmed John and his team, making them even more cornered. Playboy tried to avoid the attack and immediately moved away from that place. He started to panic, contacted Reaper to ask for help because he had lost all his colleagues. Reaper had lost Playboy from aerial monitoring, so he asked Playboy to tell him his location so that Reaper could again monitor the surrounding location by air. Naya realized that Playboy was afraid and panicked because this was his first time in a chaotic situation like this. Therefore, Nia told Reaper to keep talking with Playboy so that Reaper could calm this soldier down. Reaper then told Playboy that an evacuation helicopter would come soon to save him. Reaper also asked Playboy to move forward away from his current location. After gathering the courage to walk through the forest to the pickup location, Playboy heard the sound of a vehicle getting closer. Naya, who was monitoring the air, found objects moving from two opposite directions, and they headed towards Playboy. Playboy immediately ran and hid behind the swamp on the river bank. Reaper confirmed that his drone had one missile left and offered help from the drone. Not long after, Playboy saw a car and two people on horses and a dog. While the people were busy talking, the dog discovered Playboy's presence, approached him, and continued barking. Fortunately, the man was not suspicious and ignored the dog's barking, so he walked away. It was getting dark and Playboy had to continue walking to the pickup point, which was 1 km from his current position. Long story short, night fell. Playboy arrived at the pickup point and confirmed that the surrounding area looked safe and he was ready to be evacuated. Reaper and Nia were monitoring and didn't see any signs of the enemy. After giving the signal, not long after that, the helicopter tried to land. But suddenly, something happened. Luckily, the shot didn't hurt Playboy because it only hit his vest. Suddenly, the enemies appeared from some directions and attacked them. The helicopter tried to provide protection and clear the area. But suddenly, an enemy rocket almost hit the helicopter. For the sake of safety, the pilot decided to leave the red zone and will immediately return to the new pickup point. Playboy was now trapped alone in the middle of dozens of militants and must be able to survive to avoid counterattacks from the enemy. Meanwhile, Reaper, who was the support team, knew exactly what he had to do. Reaper fired one last missile and contacted the Hornet Air Squadron as backup to protect Playboy and would arrive in the next two minutes. Nia confirmed that there was a group of militants coming and Playboy had to be able to buy time until the Hornet plane arrived. Hornet's first attack succeeded in destroying the militant troops who had just arrived. The pilot confirmed he would turn around and immediately return to carry out a second attack. However, Playboy was reckless, ordering the pilot to fire at him, because the position of the enemy troops was currently not far from where he was. Playboy managed to move quickly to avoid all the shots, and those brutal attacks managed to clear the battle area. Long story short, the next day, Playboy was walking a long way to the new pickup point. When he communicated with Reaper, he suddenly fell into a river. At the same time, from the radar, Nia saw the movement of three people approaching Playboy. Here, Playboy was preparing to welcome his enemy, but he just realized that his weapon had been left on the cliff. With his gun, Playboy tried to protect himself from the enemy's attacks. When Playboy's bullets ran out, he was forced to run to avoid the attacks. Two remaining enemies continued to chase Playboy until he was cornered. Playboy had no choice, so he immediately jumped over the waterfall. Playboy could survive and now, he rested on the river bank. But suddenly, 
something happened. Playboy was caught and taken to a building in the middle of the forest where the militants were hiding. There, Playboy was tortured. Meanwhile, at the Nellis Air Force Base, Colonel Packett came to see Nia and Reaper to ask about the progress of the ongoing mission. Reaper told him that the mission was a mess and asked Colonel Packett to postpone the shift change until he managed to bring his soldiers back. Not long after, a mysterious man appeared at the place where Playboy was being held and immediately attacked two of Hashimi's men. It turned out that the man was John, who received instructions from Reaper after he managed to survive the missile attack yesterday. John said that Bishop also survived, but he was captured by Hashimi's men. They found several weapons hidden by Hashimi's men in the building. Playboy contacted Reaper and asked for air support to be prepared, because he and John would return to the starting point of the battle to save Bishop and the CIA agent, which was their main mission. Long story short, Playboy and John have been on the hill monitoring the situation and planning their rescue mission. John trusted Playboy to make the plan, and he explained that in the first 15 minutes, they would break in through the front door with a silent attack towards the location of Bishop and the CIA agent were detained. And the next 15 minutes was their time to immediately leave the place. After agreeing with John, Playboy then contacted Reaper to prepare three air attacks, two shots from the drones every 15 minutes to divert the enemy's attention, and one final shot in the next 15 minutes from an explosive Hornet jet to destroy the entire place. After understanding John and Playboy's plan, Reaper immediately gave a signal to the point of attack. Colonel Packett, who was in the control room and heard the plan, ordered Reaper and Nia to immediately go home because their working hours had ended several hours ago. Firmly, Reaper refused because he felt he was the person responsible for bringing his troops back safely. There was a serious argument between Reaper and Colonel Packett until finally Reaper and Nia could no longer argue and left the room. Meanwhile, Playboy and John began to kill the enemies on guard one by one. When they were inside, they saw two guards who were watching TV. So as not to cause a commotion, John used a knife to finish them off. When John tried to finish off one of the enemies, suddenly Playboy was also attacked by other enemies. But after successfully killing those criminals, John and Playboy were shot at by other enemies. The rescue mission, which was supposed to be silent, ended with shooting at each other and causing Hashimi's men to come attacking them. When Playboy tried to save John who was shot, he was attacked by one of Hashimi's men. Luckily, John managed to shoot the man. Not long afterward, a grenade was thrown at them. Long story short, John and Playboy ended up being arrested and put in the cell where Bishop was. Not long after that, John got out of the cell and Hashimi immediately executed him in front of Bishop and Playboy. In the control room, Captain Andrew, who continued Reaper's mission, had fired the first attack and Playboy felt the shock of the attack. Playboy was taken from detention and began to be tortured by Hashimi to find out what the purpose of the American soldiers was in attacking Alexander Petrov's residence, which was now occupied by Hashimi. Playboy tried to warn Hashimi that they had to get out immediately because more bombs would come to destroy the place. But instead of listening to Playboy's warning, Hashimi ordered his men to continue torturing Playboy until he told them about his mission. Captain Andrew, who replaced Reaper as drone pilot, prepared to drop the second bomb into the underground bunker where Playboy was being held. Luckily, Playboy was saved from the flames that burned the entire area because of his position in the water. Playboy took a blade belonging to Hashimi, which left behind, then headed to the detention room to check on Bishop's condition. Suddenly, he heard a prisoner asking for help. When the lockup was opened, it turned out that the man was the CIA agent they were looking for. When Playboy arrived at Bishop's detention room, it turned out that Hashimi was also there. So, without thinking twice, Playboy immediately drew his sword on Hashimi. After freeing Bishop, Playboy took Hashimi's satellite phone, and they immediately looked for a way out before the third bomb leveled the place. Feeling that there wasn't enough time to get out of the place, Playboy contacted the headquarters using Hashimi's satellite phone. But during the call, Reaper was at a supermarket. Meanwhile, at the base as usual, the surgeons were seen enjoying watching a basketball game on television. Colonel Packett ordered a surgeon to pick up the telephone call. 
The sergeant, whose gaze was still focused on the basketball game, gave Reaper's number and immediately hung up the call. Playboy immediately contacted Reaper, but unfortunately, at that time, Reaper received a call from his wife. In the control room, Captain Andrew gave the coordinates to the Hornet jet and would arrive at the target location in the next three minutes. When Reaper checked the voice message on his cell phone, he heard a message from Playboy asking him to cancel the third attack. While driving his car back to headquarters, Reaper tried to call but no one noticed the call because everyone was busy watching. The Hornet jet confirmed 30 seconds towards the target. On the other side, Playboy and others were seen continuing to look for a way out. Reaper, who had arrived at headquarters, immediately ran towards the control room. Just as the Hornet was counting down, Reaper managed to cancel the attack. Playboy, the CIA agent, and Bishop were finally safe. After that, Reaper came to the television room. He asked for the attention of those who were there. Reaper said he had called the phone five times, but not once picked up. When several people were betting their lives for the sake of their country, they were so busy watching that they even ignored the emergency calls. Reaper, who lost respect for his commander, then smashed the television in the room. When they were going home, Nia approached Reaper and wanted to say something to him. It turned out that since yesterday, Nia had wanted to ask Reaper to be the best man at her wedding. Reaper had considered Nia as her own daughter, felt that it was an honor for him, and the film ended.